Breathe in and breathe out. Relax yourself. Now take a deep breath in for Om chanting. Tatpadam darshitam yena tashmai shri guruve namaha Agyanati mirandhasya gana janashalakaya Chokshiran militam yena tashmai shri guruve namaha Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Shakshat Param Brahma, Tashmai Shri Guru Venama, Tashmai Shri Guru Venama, Tashmai Shri Guru Venama. With the blessings of Mahabhatar Babaji, his sister Mataji, Amar Jyoti Ji, Guruji Prem Nirmal, Guru Mahabharati Nirmal, and all the masters of Guru Mandala. With the blessings, we shall start our learning session today. So today's learning is about what is soul, what is meant by soul. We often refer to as the soul. So what is that? How a soul is created? From where it is coming? And also a soul's journey on the planet Earth. So how a soul enters into this planet and how it takes the journey and finally how it completes the journey. So we'll have this understanding about that. So I often, uh, in any workshop I give, touch upon this uh, subject a little bit, uh, but uh, today is particularly, uh, it is, you can, all of you who have already attended that, just take it as a refresher. Also, uh, that same knowledge, because these knowledges are higher knowledges, it's, it's, uh, these knowledges are called Brahma Gya, the knowledge of the truth, the spiritual knowledge, so when you listen to the same information, same knowledge, different point of time, your awareness grows in between. So you will have a different type of meaning. Maybe you heard the same thing earlier, but when you listen it again, then you will get a more in-depth meaning or further meaning or associated meaning that gets clear on its own. So that is why so there are some fundamental learning points. So maybe we will discuss about at least once in a year so that you are updated with that. Any further query comes, you can ask questions, get yourself clarified. Or if you are already, you know, aware whatever is already discussed, just, just listen as a satsang. So that is, that is the purpose of this topic. So. Same, uh, why I'm saying this, because same topic need to be repeated few times till it enters into our system properly. So these are such, today's topic is one such topic, which is what is soul and what is the soul's journey on the planet Earth. 
All right. So now we'll start with what uh, what we we'll, uh, last uh, week we have discussed about the seven body system. And the seven body system that I'm just uh, just recapitulation. I'm just giving you the reminder of those seven. First one is a physical body. Second one is an energy body. Third one is an emotional body. Fourth one is a knowledge body. Fifth one is a karmic body or causal body <coughs> or when the karma is clean the same uh, the after post enlightenment same body so that con uh, turns into bliss body then beyond that there is a sixth body which is a spiritual body which where the oneness is felt oneness with the divine and everything is uh, everything is I am everything that that you know I am the planet I am the galaxy I am everything whole creation is me that experience happened at sixth body and that seventh body that is this part I'm just already discussed I'm just repeating here so seventh body is not actually a body it is a background of everything so <coughs> when all identity is lost sixth body merges into seven and that is becomes the that is called nirvana that's called nirvanic body again it is not a body it is a background so but it's just named as a body to be parity with the other lower levels but it is not a body it's it's a background so this seven body system already we discussed uh, last week and what is their functions how they operate what is the correlation etc so in this so many ask me this question out of the seven body <coughs> we don't find soul anywhere where is soul there is no particular body is that this is soul that is why i today's discussion i will explain what is soul as per my own experiential understanding <coughs> what is soul <coughs> or soul consciousness before i go into this discussion i just wanted to make little bit of footnote here so that we are in the right perspective here i will share what is my direct first hand experiential understanding of what is soul it may or may not match with wherever written somewhere or some other master say something about the soul or what is written in gita or any other religious text that we will not discuss here we'll discuss what is my direct experiential understanding and i will encourage you to experience the same thing on you first hand then you accept it i'm not the purpose of explaining is not intended that you take my version you should not you have to experience yourself i'm just sharing my experiential understanding of what is soul so don't bring any other you know remarks or anybody else explain it in a different way it is that we will not discuss here so this is just a footnote so that it, we have been in the right perspective to me what i understood the soul is a package of third to sixth body system all this together is called soul we call it soul so what are those third body third body is a emotional body fourth body is a knowledge body fifth is a karmic body karmic uh, or causal body sixth is a spiritual body <coughs> this four bodies is combination is a package but my understanding is my experiential understanding is that is our soul now the next question is why first and second bodies are not part of the soul and also why seventh body is not part of the soul either why they are excluded so now i'm going to explain you that at the time of death our physical body get dissolved this goes into the panch mahabhuta five elements back to the five elements after 11 or 13 days in that period of time about uh, between uh less than 2 weeks time our energy body also dissolves after death third body and above they remain 
Third body or above they remain and when another birth has been taken, next incarnation, the lower two bodies are formed and then with a new body and the new um, energy body and physical body, the new life starts from there. So <coughs> third and above, it become common. So as with each life, the physical body, first body and second body, they dissolves or they changes. So that's why soul cannot be part of it because soul is immortal. Soul does not die. Only it changes one body to another, one incarnation to another incarnation and it experiences life as it forms. So what is the purpose of that? I will come back later on when I'll, I'll explain the journey of soul's journey on planet Earth. So the logic is to me, third, why third to sixth? Because lower two bodies get changed in every lifetime. So they cannot be part of the soul. They are not in the immortal category. So that's why they are not part of the soul. Right now I'm explaining why the seven body is also not part of the soul. So what happens is at the at the finally when all lower bodies get dissolves, finally up to the sixth body, the identity is there. Each soul has an identity. Each soul consciousness has an identity. It has got a uniqueness because suppose I'm saying it is my soul. So my soul has an identity. It takes different birth in different point of time. So as long as identity is there, soul is there. Means or each soul has a name or identification mark or something so that you can identify this soul is that and it is having different different lifetimes. When sixth body merges into the seventh, it is like the river Ganges merges into the ocean at Ganga Sagar. That is in the soul level that is called Nirvana, means no coming back. It is dissolved into the vast ocean of consciousness or universal consciousness. So that is the time where the universe, soul consciousness or individual consciousness merges into universal consciousness. Like the water of the Ganges merges into the ocean. So water itself, it doesn't get dissolved. It doesn't evaporate. That water suddenly disappears. No, water is still there. But the water has <coughs> gone into the sea. So what is lost? Only the identity of the river, that is this particular water coming from the river Ganges, only that identity is lost, not the river, not the water. <coughs> water remains there, but water becomes part of the ocean, but the identity of the river, that get dissolved. And same thing happens at the time of Nirvana, at the end of soul's journey. Then sixth body finally merges with the seventh and there is no further coming back. The identity of the soul has been merged back into the, the universal consciousness, the one. And there it is all get merged back and the soul's journey ends there. How it starts, I will come back a little later. And that is why as there is no identity left at the seventh body, seventh body also cannot be part of the soul. Because soul, it lost its identity. It's a common, it's the one. All of us, we are having same seven body because we came from the same source. And it, in that sense, we are all one. Okay, we started from one, we are one and we will be one anyway. So it's all about that, the journey. Only thing, we have taken a branch in the individual souls and we are experiencing our own life as per our soul's plan. But end of this journey, we'll march it back to the source or universal consciousness. So that is that is the understanding of the soul. Now I'm explaining that how, what, what is the purpose of the soul? <clears throat> Why the soul is, uh, you know, created to start with? And what, I what is doing in the, in this planet Earth? So that part I'm now starting. Let us start with the how it is started. 
what happened was earlier there was only one supreme consciousness or universal consciousness there's only one the source the one it has got a it is completely pure it is having full of pure love pure awareness highest level means it is infinite infinite power infinite a power means three types of power ichcha shakti will power by will it kriya shakti it can create and uh, ichcha shakti kriya shakti gyan shakti infinite knowledge infinite power of creation kriya shakti and um, it is uh, uh, an infinite power of will by will it can create anything that kind of power and it has got all the knowledge infinite knowledge ki whatever possible any situation or any creation or anything possible all knowledges are available with the one with the source but being the one suppose it it knows what what it what it means by uh, say what is what it uh, uh, means like uh, cooking suppose i'm just giving some example it knows what is cooking and all these kind of things or how to feed another person suppose you you put you know in the, in the childhood my mother used to feed that you know the food into our mouth so the universal consciousness knows how to feel like feeding others mother is feeding the child or how it feels like the child getting the food from mother both are known only thing is missing was that time the experience of that knowledge is there it knows what it is but still it wants to experience that Just to have this kind of experience then mother need to be created child i'm just giving an example the same thing can be put it into all these different types of scenarios so mother need to be created and then uh, maybe the child need to be created and mother has to cook and feed and all those things so those are the things coming out the experience so you need to create some background to do that have that kind of first hand experience <coughs> so what it did it created part of itself because it is only one it created part of itself or it can it made infinite parts of itself and each of the part has been given a tag number or soul universal consciousness is the the one and the part of it is a individual consciousness or soul consciousness and each soul has been given a unique identification number or name or something and a unique path like a soul's journey why because that particular soul that particular part has to experience certain things maybe it needs to experience a 500 things and end of 500 thing it comes back to the back to the source because its purpose is served these 500 things what is wants to experience through that path through that soul is called soul's plan and what is where it ends it ends back to the where it started the source because there is nowhere else to go <clears throat> when you are one then it is difficult to travel somewhere move somewhere and do something but when the part is there part has a journey what is the journey it is coming back to the whole again that is ultimate during the process two parts they interact with each other then the relationship develops interaction develops all the experiences related to the interaction they become experienced first hand some soul has been given to the play the role of a mother and another soul has been given role of a child so in that context that mother's soul can experience how it is feel like feeding the child and the child also experiences how is feel like feeding get fed by mother <clears throat> 
So at the end of the booth, I'm just giving one example. Like that, there are hundreds. So end of that, that both of them they come back to the source. So those are experiences are recorded first hand into different channels. Like that, there are infinite channels, infinite souls. In fact, it is keep creating the many, 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 many souls. So everything is in infinite range, infinite number of souls and it is keep creating. Now, this is how it is, why it is created, because you want to experience itself. The universal consciousness wants to experience itself in infinite ways. That's why it is infinite number of souls are created and each of them have been given infinite number of paths. I mean, each of them given us one path each to follow. That is soul's plan. End of that, that journey, it will come back to the source. One such soul, there are many dimensions, but the earth is, earth plane is one of them. When a soul enters into the earth plane, it enters as a mineral. It can be stone or metal or something like that. Some earth, yeah, just, uh, just, just a soil, things like that. It enters into the mineral kingdom. Then after few million years of experiences of on the mineral kingdom, then uh, normally, but there is no fixed rule. It has to follow that, but normally it follows that, that thing. First is mineral kingdom. Then it experience itself in different forms of plant kingdom. Then experience in different forms of animal kingdom, several thousands of animal birds. And then finally is a human body. It become human. Human also, there are low awareness level to high awareness level. At the end of the human journey, it become a spiritual being. So after human, the spiritual being. Spiritual being means self-realized. Self-realized soul. And before that, it is just a human being. Means not self-realized yet. So end of it, when you get enlightened, it becomes a spiritual being. It comes into contact with the ultimate knowledge and the truth and experience itself directly. And that ends that uh, the soul's journey on planet Earth. After that, no need to come back. Of course, there are some some souls that choose to come back. They don't. There is no compulsion. They don't have to. But still, they can come just to help others and things like that. That is called dharmic birth. So this is that soul's journey on planet Earth. And on that, <clears throat> when it becomes a spiritual being, then the journey starts from this lower. It starts with the physical body. Through the detachment, is go to higher and higher body. And through sadhana, finally, it goes into the sixth body. And then, ultimately, when there is nothing is left to do in this, this world, it gets dissolved. Every All lower bodies get dissolved. And one marches into the universal consciousness that is nirvana <clears throat> for all our case that there will be there will be different different gurus in our lives different lifetimes but end of our soul's journey the guru which will help us to go from the seventh body to final merger to the seventh that is called moksha guru and moksha guru of humanity is mahavatar bhavadi for all of us, whether you know it or no, don't know it, either heard the name or don't heard the name, anybody, any religion, anything, it doesn't matter. Okay, so ultimately it will be, that will be done by Babaji. And that way our, the Nirvana, the final, the dissolution, that, that will happen. So this is about the, our soul's journey. So I will now stop here. So if you have any question, you ask me, then I will answer them. Um, Guruji, Babaji is from taking us from 6th to 7th or 7th beyond? There is no beyond 7th. It's the only universal consciousness. So it is from 6th to 7th, Babaji is uh, there. Only six to seven. This is no all lower body because that is the time I'm giving example like a Ganges meet with the Sagar. 
ओके सागर हैज नो फर्दर जर्नी ओके सो दैट इज दैट इज बाबा जी विल बी सुपरवाइज दैट सिक्स टू सेवन या एंड वो नीचे जो है ना फिजिकल बॉडी फिजिकल लाइफ बाबा जी का चेला लोग दे विल बी द गुरु एंड गाइड द पीपल बट अल्टीमेटली इट विल बी द बाबा जी हुई डू द फाइनल वन राजदीप वन मोर क्वेश्चन बिफोर मैम यू आज नाउ व्हेन वी सिट इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू हाउ मेनी बॉडीज यू आर एबल टू सी आवर इट डजेंट मैटर it doesn't matter in normally by naked eye up to third level can be seen up to emotional body okay yeah but there that doesn't matter when they, uh, to to see further higher bodies you have to come to create some kind of conditions background should be proper uh, your energy level should be high and uh, the master also had to concentrate in a certain way hmm. okay so this needs that uh, uh, guru ji says uh, uske liye मूड में आना चाहिए सो वो मूड में आने का देर इज सम तरीका ओके सो एनी वे जोक्स अ पार्ट बट इट नीड्स लिटिल बिट ऑफ प्रिपरेशन टू गो बियॉन्ड थर्ड इट इज पॉसिबल बट टू गो बियॉन्ड थर्ड बट बट थोड़ा मैं इरादे में थोड़ा सा पानी डाल रहा हूं इवन इफ द मास्टर द सी दो हैड थिंग नॉर्मली दे डोंट शेयर बिकॉज इट विल इंटरफेयर विथ नो बिकॉज इट विल इंटरफेयर इन टू योर एक्सपीरियंस ओके और टाइम आएगा तो खुद ब खुद समझ में आ जाएगा किसी और से लेने का जरूरत नहीं है ओके यू अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इट इज थैंक यू गुरु ओके ऑल राइट ओके शुक्रिया सो आई वाज आस्किंग व्हेन वाज द गुरु तत्व क्रिएटेड इन दिस प्रोसेस इन दिस जर्नी वेयर इज द गुरु तत्व इन दिस दिस इज अ गुड क्वेश्चन actually uh, guru tatva was created when the fast soul has crossed over to the seventh from there then he started you know following the second and third and so and so forth okay so this tradition is a very old tradition in that sense from there only it started once the first person or first soul get completed its journey from there it started helping the second and thing like that so he, he become the first guru or adi guru <clears throat> and that guru ji this oh, sorry okay ma'am yeah, no no this asking so and that soul it doesn't didn't have to be a human soul right or it had to be a human no uh, we're not necessarily but normally the whoever guides human they normally they prefer to have a, some human birth hmm, first so that they can guide more uh, you know more in detail but there are many masters who never taken birth uh, like uh, in philippines there is a white lady uh, she used to communicate through reverend alex orbito uh, and she has some guidance and all those things she never took birth never in in any human body okay so there are other masters who are associated with earth but never been taken birth on earth that is also there and how do you call her white lady <laughs> that's the name they call white lady that's the energy that's a master soul <laughs> but then how this i mean the Uh, from mineral to plants, for example. Yes. And how did, and how did the soul journey from mineral to plants um, even happen? I mean, if if that was not, I mean, that journey had to happen because usually we say that the journey happens with uh, evolution of the soul. Okay, Shubhraya. Yeah. let me just give we are talking about souls journey here huh? all darwin theory need to be dropped yeah. right away yeah, not darwin okay yeah sure darwin's yeah. theory need to be dropped right away we are talking about souls journey huh? not evolution theory okay okay just don't be, get confused with the you know the darwin's theory okay evolution theory any kind of evolution theory hmm what we are discussing it not evolution of the the life on earth what we are talking the souls journey 
as for example the mineral it is not part of the you know uh, livestock anyway you know it's not part of that no okay that's why i'm asking so how i mean yeah yeah, yeah. so that's what i'm saying the drop that that idea that it is to evolve it not it doesn't need to evolve it chooses different life form for the different experiences that it need not to come through evolution okay suppose the evolution takes 5 million years but a soul's journey can be completed in you know several thousand years it can choose one birth at a time in you know, a different different forms and finish it okay that is possible hmm okay so are we saying so that, that but, all of these all of these plants animal minerals plants animals human what were you just mm -hmm. said as the soul's journey on planet earth yes. all of them always existed from zero time no I, no i am not saying that what i am saying is the evolution is a different thing altogether mm -hmm. okay but but your soul's journey is different it is nothing to do with that when the conducive environment come it took birth okay in that particular time and era but it didn't take part in actual evolution process means say suppose any particular soul it need not to go, go through the monkey and then uh, you know what is called um, uh, what is a jungle man type of thing that throw stones and all this so then you know to take up all these things one after another no need mm -hmm. they can wait till that that available formation comes they take birth into that hmm. you 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 i'm just trying to understand so even in the human you you are, we are lower than higher than sorry did you am i just one moment uh, haryom can you mute your microphone oh. haryom yeah yes supriya uh, tell again So, so yeah. in the human birth itself, we have a lower human birth, then we have a higher, and then you yes. go to spiritual birth, right? Yes, yes. Oh, so, that's right. So before lower human birth is what? Animal. So maybe is... one life before the, that that person was maybe cow. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm what saying is, not to follow the evolution pattern. That's what I'm saying. Not a monkey, then chimpanzee, then. you know all these things yeah. okay. then okay. came man then fun so any okay, but, i mean i could be any animal ha any animal, animal. Oh, it, yeah, it yeah, you have a choice yeah. Yeah. you choose that which one you like to take okay but collectively the whole animal kingdom may be evolving that is a different issue that's what okay. i mean correct okay <laughs> there are some some animals they no longer exist so you even if you choose you cannot take birth as a dinosaur okay so that has gone that era has gone hmm. okay as a animal kingdom it evolved on planet earth so what i am saying is soul need not to follow that pattern it can choose when it comes to has to come in which form and it can choose that that's what i am saying okay and now i am going back to the first question the how Okay. Uh, from them, uh, okay. Other life forms we can still understand. You know, one life born, another life came. But how one uh, the mineral like a stone become a life form? Mm -hmm. That's what you are asking. No? First one. Yes. Yeah, because that we we don't have any. Uh, so again, because it is not a biological phenomenon, that's why it cannot be explained biologically. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I can do is I can share what happened to my soul. how my soul has been converted from the rock to the plant kingdom i have seen my when we is my you know rock i was as a rock when i was and where it was and where it was situated and all those kind of things maybe uh, i spent in that rock body in the 15 million years okay so anyway so when the time has come that our rock experience is over then what happened was one pralaya came you know the pralaya yeah. that flood and all over the world and it it the renew time hmm. mm. pralaya came and the rock has been uh, by particle by particle is taken away 
by the pralaya. Hmm. That particle, it was moving in the high speed of the water. I had just seen it like, uh, uh, what is called, the television show. Mm -hmm. I see it is going in a, in a with high velocity and all this in the during pralaya, it is passing through that phase. In the It's rotating very fast, that small particle of stone. And then it converted into a, one phytoplankton, I mean, a single... A cell plant into that process and then the plant journey starts from there a lot of thousands of the types of uh, you know underwater plant and all then the above, above water on the land plant and things like that okay. okay so that is how it happened in the, in this soil in my case okay. but again this is not biological phenomenon eh? <clears throat> Okay, so this is nothing to do with the evolution. Thank you. Sir. Okay, so that answers your question. <laughs> so much I understood. Yes. Uh -huh. Maybe I'll come back later with more questions. It's okay. It's okay. If you have any specific question, then you can ask. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. All right. Okay. Hari, uh, Hari, yes. What is the role of this Gotra? Like we say, our Gotra is Kashyap, Kashyap Rishi. Are they part of Guru Mandala or what is their uh, significance? No, no, but that uh, I, I don't want to discuss these things. Okay. Okay. This is part of some, uh, you know, the religious things and the sects and things like that. So I don't want to. Okay. This is not that. part of Guru Mandala and all those. No, no, if, if they are not there. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is this is not part of the spiritual journey. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it is something else. Some name has been given to something and uh, you know, those kind of things. So uh, that normally I don't want to discuss that because if you directly experience something, I am experiencing this Gotra within myself, then I will explain. Okay. okay. Because if you read it somewhere, I'm not going to explain that. What does that mean? Hmm. No, I have not read anything. I just wanted to know what is the significance. No, I understood. That's what I'm saying. Don't bother about this theoretical knowledge. Okay. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, Dada, one question. Um, who decides? Yes, uh, uh, Dada, who decides this particular soul will be there for so many years? Like you said, you were uh, there as a rock or uh, for f 15 million years. Who decides this? Uh, this is a very good question. Soul itself decides. It is as per soul's plan. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Soul decides okay. I'll be in this form for so many time. Okay. In fact, before every birth, so that I answered that question, but now let me tell even human birth, it will be easier for us to understand because we are human being. Okay. When a life ends, okay, so soul wanted to achieve something. Okay. Most of the thing what happens, we have a free will. Even if there is a plan, but Soul doesn't force anyone to follow the plan. They create situations, but they don't force anyone to follow that. Okay. So what happened? Because of free will, we maybe we have not completed the plan or we do something extra for that need to be compensated again. What is not on the plan? Those are the factors called karma. We bind karma, we develop karma, we generate karma because of our free will. So something is not there in the plan, but still we can create something new. Okay. Out of free will. Okay. So now what is happening is, so initially there will only soul plan. Say I'm talking the first human birth. Maybe everything is soul plan. Maybe the soul plan is you take 50 births, you get all these kind of experiences and that's it. But during the process of the 50 births, you do something out of your free will. Suppose you cheated someone. So, and that return has not happened in that life. So not only school's plan, it has to come back again to repay that amount. So like that, what happens is at every end of each life, soul sit down and find out what, what would be the best next life where you can settle your karmic account also 
you can you can finish your soul's plan and also at the same time the karmic the additional thing you are unnecessarily picked up that also need to be settled so then it designs the next life such a way that your karmic accounts get neutralized as quickly as possible okay so yeah, and if this review takes place at the end of each life yeah. again you have a choice not to follow that and not to do if you don't settle that it will go to the next life and so on you know it will continue till you finish that uh, one more thing dada if the soul does not uh, want to uh, end itself but it happens automatically like the soul, uh, the body meets with an accident or uh, something some something something happens like that then in that yeah. case it's not the soul yeah, plan, rest, but it happens accidentally yeah fine in that case the rest of the plan which is not done because of any reason it can be accident it can be willful willful means you intentionally you didn't do it there was opportunity but you didn't do it in that case it transferred to the next life next it's not happen the next so hmm. in the higher dimension there is no time it will wait till millennia till everything is settled okay, okay. it can design another 50 life times to get it settled okay so that, that is that is the right understanding okay thank you thank you thank you all right okay any anyone else having any question yes, i want to ask something uh sonika okay sonika go ahead um recently you know um i don't know it's a good thing or bad thing very minute sounds you know uh, a normal sound is like too much sound for me like if someone is yes. talking I, i feel someone is screaming you know next to my ears and today was hmm. too much somebody came to talk to me well, we had a distance of uh, uh, more than 6 feet and i had to tell you know his earphones were around his neck and i said please switch off these songs and i was so surprised how could i hear you know even he was not listening to it it was in his neck and i could hear you know some songs were there and i said please switch it yeah. off he said what i said the, the songs in your earphone and he realized it was still on so uh, uh, even mm. the, during the day i can hear the you know the tiktok of the uh, wall clock also so mm-hmm. uh, even such small things um, are i can feel all the time so it's it's bothering okay. me i think some problem is with me or maybe my ears have become very sharper that i can hear even the small thing because yes. uh, sometime before it was like if somebody sitting next to me and whispering <laughs> i'm not able to hear it i used to think mm. that i have hard of hearing at a very young age wherein i cannot hear even if you're whispering and i'll say no i don't understand speak loudly now even the very very minute thing is like very loud to me is it all right or something wrong or uh, i can't comprehend i, I can't even digest right. it rather all right okay i'll answer your question see what happens is spiritually speaking uh, spiritually speaking uh, when we practice our awareness level goes up you know we we do the i uh, just practice the six step listen to all the sounds around you all the sounds around you and all those things even you meditate you concentrate focus your hearing ability goes very high even if pin drops you know even pin drops normally other times you may have to just ignore that but during meditation you will feel a tang some bigger sound will come hmm. you will hear that so it happens because of our our sensitivity goes higher the awareness level goes higher noise internal noise in the form of thoughts comes down that's why we can hear minor sound also very loudly so even to that extent not meditating we can hear ah uh, uh, sorry even when we are not meditating we are doing yes. a normal work still we will feel that still still our awareness goes up i I'm, i'm just explaining then i will address your specific issues then you come to certain level you can hear your breathing you can hear your you know heartbeat and when it goes further you can hear somebody else's heartbeat also you become so sensitive hmm. okay so up to that level it goes so normally what happens is that 
um, now this is what happens. So basically I'm saying what you are experiencing is not abnormal. It is a part of your awareness level going up. Second part of it is that how to handle it into day to day life. Okay. Because it is, it is not, uh, you know, uh, the Japanese, they use some word. Mm. So I, I like that word. They use the word. It is, it is impolite to do this. It is impolite to do that. Okay. They don't, <clears throat> they don't say it is wrong or it is rude or something. They use the word, it is impolite, you know, to ask someone to leave the seat or impolite to take the food from somebody, something like that they use. So it is impolite, I'm using the same terminology, it is impolite to ask somebody, you shut up, you know, you lower the lower volume and all those kind of things. Mm. Because the people take it as an offense. Okay, and also indirectly, it looks like that I am boosting myself that I am sensitive and all that kind of thing that comes, which is which may to some extent correct or may not be correct either. So my advice will be that you uh, you need not to control others. You can still control yourself. When somebody is talking, you, you can you, you can lower your the what is called the internal reception volume, you can say. Unless until it, it is, you know, drastically awkward, you that? can still do that. No, by intention. You, you accept the fact that this is too loud volume for me. And be in the witness and slowly, slowly it will come down to the level what is acceptable to your system. It will happen automatically. Only the key is the witnessing. You need not to tell the other guy to, to control control the volume. It is possible. Because you, you till, now, uh, till now, like, you know, I was very used to of listening. Uh, you know, the, the TV is very loud in a house all the time. So, you know, I'm in tune and I don't even, you know, listen, even if it is very loud. When I talk to someone over the phone, they say, you know, the TV is very loud. And I say, oh, I can't even hear it. It was, you know, that was such a case. Now, even when someone is talking, I feel that, you know, can you please speak, you know, very softly? Or shall I put some, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a cotton in my ear so that, you know... <laughs> so uh, that, that's up to you. If, you. if you wish to, there's no, no problem with that. But what I'm saying is, try not to control the external factors. Control, keep your control inside. So how to control inside? Till the time I will not be able to control, I'll put some cotton. No. But how I'll control that, you know, uh, whatever is sound like is normal for me. Yeah, that is, that's what I'm saying. I'll repeat here. You have to witness that sound. Witness. Okay. So what witness am I doing the sound. right now? I'm listening right now. Yes. So you witness that and then you intend that please bring it down to the level acceptable to me. It will, it will filter itself. So this is my self-talk. You can say it is your self-talk. Okay, this way you can keep the control within you. Otherwise, the same external factors can bother you, that can create irritation within you. And, you know, basically all the external factors will control you. Control your mind rather. That, hmm. that is why I'm having a lot of itching in my ears and, you know, I'm feeling like being alone because because the, the sounds are irritating yeah. me so much. No, initially you can use some kind of things like a cotton, etc. if you feel like. Okay. So, and, but what I'm saying is this is nothing wrong. You know, that you get sensitivity goes high and things like that. And uh, you will, you will develop your own way to face these things. Okay, so there is nothing, you need not to, neither you have to run away, nor you have to tell them, okay, you calm down and quiet and things like that. No need. Okay. Or uh, this is about the spiritually, but practically speaking, and if, suppose, I'm giving some tips now. Suppose actually somebody is talking very loudly. Huh? What you can do is you cut the pattern. Don't, you know, uh, reply to the same volume. Somebody, somebody has a habitually they're shouting. You intentionally calm down your voice. So please tell me how I can help you. 
No, there is a problem there. Yes, kindly advise me what I can do for you. So you control. Lower your voice, make it calm. Even if you almost, they cannot hear it. It's okay. They get the message. They come down. <clears throat> no need to tell them. Okay? Don't speak louder and things like that. Just lower your volume. Speak softly. And uh, sometimes you make it vividly sweetened voice so that nobody can miss it. Okay. That's how it's so possible they will, for they me. Will, they will realize ki why it is talking so sweet and so light. Then they get the message, ki, oh, maybe I am talking too loud. All right. So, till now, I was thinking that I'm too loud. Now, when I'm hearing people, I'm thinking that, you know, maybe they, they are also feeling very, very, you know, bad that, you know, I am so loud and that must be hurting their ears as well. No, that is also possible. If you talk loud, they will reply loudly. Okay, so now if your sensitivity just goes up, the same level you are thinking the other has gone louder. May not be. Okay, do some experiment. My advice is do that. This issue you already noticed it is a good thing. Now you experiment with that. Hmm. There is ways to control the situation without without directly intervening and all these kind of things. You know, the people, because... You may be walking on the spiritual part, but people have ego. You have to take care of it. Like you have to bypass that ego, not to create clashes. All right. Okay. Yes, that's it's perfectly fine. Thank you, Aki. All right. Okay. God bless you. All right. So if there is no other question, then we'll go for this, our Kriya and meditation. All right.